We present Vile Bodies, a radio play by Barry Campbell from the novel by Evelyn Waugh with John Standing, Lynn Redgrave and Anna Cropper. The time, 1928. The place, mainly London. Vile Bodies. Chastity. Chastity don't feel well. She took ill as soon as we got out of the harbor at Boulogne. That girl's more trouble than she's worth. Chastity doesn't feel well. All the rest here. Humility. Prudence. Mercy. Justice. Divine discontent. Uh, creative endeavors lost her wings, Mrs. Ape. She got talking to a gentleman in the... Oh, oh there she is. Got him? Right. Don't go leaving him in Dover. Just you hold on to him and not so much talking to the gentleman. You're angels, not a pant, Hosey. Oh, what a ghastly crossing. Too sick-making. Oh, dear. I do hope the customs people will hurry up. This is far too boring. Next, please. Have you anything to declare? Wings. Uh, hello. Adam Simes, isn't it? I doubt whether you'll remember me. I thought I saw you on the boat. Good, good Lord, it's Father uh, Rothschild. That's right. We met at Oxford five years ago at luncheon with the Dean of Balliol. I shall be interested to read your book when it appears, an autobiography, I understand. And may I be the first to congratulate you on your engagement. Well, I must go now. We meet at Lady Metroland's on the 12th. By the way, did you see that terrible woman on board? Mrs. Ape, an evangelist, I believe. Well, yes. Goodbye. Next, please. You, sir. Have you anything to declare? No, I have nothing but some very old clothes and some books. Books, eh? What sort of books, may I ask? Well, look for yourself. Thank you. That's what I mean to do. Books, indeed. Hmm. I should just about say you had got some books. Hmm. Dante. Blech. French, eh? Our guest is much and pretty dirty, too, I shouldn't wonder. Now, uh, just you wait here while I look up these here books in my list. Particularly against books the home secretary is. If we can't stamp out literature in the country, we can at least stop it being brought in from the outside. That's what he said the other day in Parliament, and I says, ear, ear. Hello, hello. What's this, may I ask? Oh, that's a book, too. It's one I've just written. It's my, my memoirs. Well, I'll take that along to the chief. Uh, you better come, too, uh, this way. Oh, but I've got a train to catch. There's worse scenes than missing trains. If uh, you'll just wait in here a moment, sir. Uh, yes, but I, Thank I must... Thank you, sir. Shall I keep you a moment? This way, please, miss. Really, this is absolutely intolerable. Intolerable. Just wait until I get to London. I shall read every newspaper I can think of. I shall... Thank you, please, miss. Oh, no, you're not a touch me, really. I won't. Please be reasonable, miss. I must, sir. It's my job. Oh, miss. don't you dare. Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. This is my chief. How do you do? Uh, now, look here. Do you realise it? Crumbs. Uh, I hope you uh, haven't been worried by the noise across the corridor well, only the other day. Well, right, then, what's all this about books? Let's have a look. Got the list there? And close that door. Yes, sir. Right, then, we'll go through the list of uh, banned literature. Ready? Aristotle works. Illustrated. Aretino. Not in and now, what's all this in your handwriting now? Memoirs. Oh, 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 I'm awfully sorry. I seem to have chosen the wrong door. Adam, darling, I never saw you on the boat. Co Agatha Runcible. Good <laughs> Lord, what a surprise. Oh, my dear, I can't tell you the things that have been happening to me in there. The <laughs> way they looked, too, too shaming, positively surgical, my dear. As <laughs> soon as I get to London, I shall ring up every cabinet minister and all the newspapers and give them all the most shy-making details. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Uh, can I have my books now? Well, see, uh, you can take these books on architecture and the dictionary. But this book on economics comes under subversive propaganda. And this here purgatorio don't look right to me. So that stays behind pending inquiries. But as for this autobiography, 
That's just downright dirt. And we burns that straight away. My dear. I know dirt when I see it or I shouldn't be where I am today. But do you realise my whole livelihood depends on this book? And my livelihood depends on stopping works like this coming into the country. But look Adam, here. Adam, Angel, don't fuss or we shall miss the train and then we shall never be in London in time for Archie Schwett's party. Yes, but it's... No, a... do come along, Adam. Last. Agatha, where have you been? Well, you'll never believe it. I was stripped, my dear, by the custom. Oh, how devastating. How goat-like. Oh, too, too awful. <laughs> Who is this Archie Schwartz? <laughs> oh, it's someone new, the most bogus man. Miles discovered him, and since then he's been climbing and climbing, my dear, until he hardly knows us. He's rather sweet, really, and he's too terribly common, poor darling. He lives at the Ritz, and I think that's rather grand, don't you? <laughs> is he giving his party there? My dear, of course not. It's at Edward Throbbing's house. He's Miles's brother, you know, and he's frightfully dim and political. He's gone away so we've all gone to live there. You'd better come too. Well, I rather thought I'd go to Shepherd to tell, but I must see my publishers about my manuscript. Well, well, Adam, how are you? This is nice. Sit down. Where are you staying? At uh, Shepherd to tell, Lottie Crump. Oh, well, that's always fun. I've been trying to get an autobiography out of Lottie for ten years, and that reminds me. You're bringing us your manuscript, aren't you? I hope you're not going to say it's not finished. The date on the contract, you know. Oh, it's finished, all right. Burnt. By the customs. Uh, burnt? What an awful thing. Oh, it's all very difficult, you know. You have had an advance already, haven't you? Fifty pounds, wasn't it? Well, I, I mean, would it be convenient and all that to repay the advance? Not only inconvenient, but impossible. Oh, deuce to awkward. Look... I think I can see a way out. We'll have a new contract. Forget all about the advance. Oh, but I... I, I, I my dear fellow, don't thank me. We'll... Look, we'll just give you our standard first novel contract. Now, uh, just sign here. Oh. May I see the terms? Well, of course, my dear fellow. They look a bit hard at first, I know, but it's our usual form. It's very simple. Uh, no royalty on the first 2,000, then a royalty of 2.5%, rising to 5% and 10,000. Uh, we retain uh, serial, cinema, dramatic, American, colonial, and translator's rights, of course, and an option on your next 12 books on the same terms. Now, don't you bother any more about the advance. I understand perfectly. Oh, I see. But 12 books... Hello? Oh, hello. may I speak to Miss Blunt, please? I'll just see if she's in. Who's speaking, please? Uh, Mr. Fenwick Syme. Oh. Adam, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Nina? Well, I've got rather a pain just at present. Oh, poor Nina. Shall I come round and see you? No, don't do that, darling, because I'm just going to have a bath. Why don't we dine together? Well, I asked Agatha Runcible to dinner. Why? She just had all her clothes taken off by some sailors. <laughs> Yes, I know. It's in all the evening papers. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's meet at Archie Schwartz's party. You going? I rather said I would. Oh, I say, Nina, there is one thing. I don't think I shall be able to marry you after all. Oh, Adam, you are a bore. Why not? They burnt my book. Beasts. Who did? I'll tell you about it tonight. Yes, do. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, my sweet. If I catch you powdering your nose again, my Italian queen, oh, I'll bold. Bold. Hello, Lottie. Well, you're a stranger. Come along in. We were just thinking about having a little drink. You'll find lots of your friends here. <laughs> <laughs> you all know Lord Thingamy, don't you? Mr. Symes. Yes, dear, that's what I said. Bless you, I knew you before you were born. Now, let me introduce you. Mr. What's-his-name? You remember him, don't you? And over there in the corner, that's the Major. And there's the King of Ruritania. Well? What about a little drink? Here, yeah, you over there, Your Honour, Judge. What's your name? How about a drink for the gentleman? I shall esteem it a great honour of His Majesty and yourself, Mrs. Crump, and these other good gentlemen. That's the way. Hi there, where's my fairy prince? 
Come in here, Nancy, and put away the beauty cream. Yes, madam. Champagne, madam. Who do you think we've got dining upstairs tonight? Prime Minister. He ain't alone either. What, Sir James Brown? I don't believe it. No, name of outrage. But he's not the new Prime Minister? Yes, he is. I saw it in the papers. No, he's not. Went out of office last week. Oh, they do keep changing. I've no patience with it. Now, who's for a drink? Tell my little lovebird to come up in somebody. I'm here, I'm here. Judge wants another bottle of champagne. I should honour it a great esteem if Mrs. Majesty and these gentlemen and his crumb... <laughs> That's all right, Judge. Another bottle coming. Don't let him fall down, boys. Bless me, how these Americans do drink. I should crump it a great majesty if Mrs. Esteem would... Hey, no! Me? Yes. I bet you can't do this. Three halfpennies. So... There. They only touched them five times and changed their positions twice. It didn't look very hard. Just you try. Bet you anything you like, you can't do it. How much will you bet? Anything you like. Five hundred pounds? All right. There. How's that? <laughs> well, I'm jiggered. Never saw anyone do it like that before. I've won a lot of money this week with that trick. Well, here you are, 500 pounds. Thank you. That's sporting. Give the boys a drink for that. I tell you what, toss you, double or quits. All right. Here goes. Heads. Well, I'm jiggered. You are a lucky chap. Here you are. Do you mind if I telephone, Lottie? Of course not, dear. Uh, is that Nina? Adam, dear, you're tight already. How do you know? I can hear it. What is it? I'm just going out to dinner. Well, I just rang up to say it's all right about our getting married. I've got a thousand pounds. Oh, good. How? Well, I'll tell you when we meet. Uh, where are you dining? Ritz, darling. I am glad about our getting married. So am I. Oh, but don't let's get intense about it. I wasn't. Anyway, you're tight. Well... Right here! <laughs> Who's that tart dressed as not tot? <laughs> That's not a tart. That's Agatha Runcible. We're going on to Arthur Schwartz's fancy dress party. Looks like a tart in that grass skirt. How do you do, my dear? So you're Agatha Runcible. How do you do? Come in, come in. We were just thinking of having a little drink. You know everyone here, of course, don't you? Well, I can't say that I know them all, but... Yes, dear. I... Now, let me introduce you. Mr. What's-his-name, oh, yeah. you remember him. Yeah. And over there in the corner, that's the Major. Oh. And that's an American. Oh. And that's the King with the beard. Not King! No, dear, the King of Ruritania. Oh. You didn't mind my taking you for a tart, did you, dear? You look so like one, got up like that. Of course, I can see you aren't now. My dear, if you'd seen me this afternoon... Ah! Agatha, what would you do if you suddenly got a thousand pounds? I'd put it on a horse. What horse? Well, I can tell you a likely outsider for the November handicap. A horse named Indian Runner. Now, if you were to put a thousand pounds on him to win, and he won... You'd be rich, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes, I would. How marvellous. Do you know, I think I'll do that. It's a very good idea. Oh, uh, how can I do it? Oh, just give me the thousand and I'll arrange it. Oh, I say, that's awfully nice of you. Not at all. No, no, really, no, I do think that's quite too nice of you. Look, uh, here's the money. Have a drink, won't you? No, 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 you have one with me. Oh, well, wait a minute, though. I must go and telephone about this. Oh, hello, Nina. Darling, you do telephone a lot, don't you? Nina, I've got something important to say. Yes, darling. Nina, um, have you ever heard of a horse called Indian Runner? Yes, I think so. Why? Well, um, what sort of a horse is it? My dear, it's quite the worst sort of horse. Mary Mouse's mother owns it. Oh, not a good horse? No. Uh, not likely to win the November Handicap, I mean. Quite sure not. Oh, I say, Nina, do you know... Oh, I don't think we shall be able to get married after all. Why not, my sweet? Well, you see, I've put my thousand pounds on Indian Runner. I gave it to a major. He offered to place the bet for me. What sort of major? Oh, rather a drunk one. I don't know his name. Well, I should try and catch him. I must go and eat now. Goodbye. I say, Lottie, 
Where's the major? What major? I never saw a major. You know, the one you introduced me to in the corner. How do you know he's a major? Well, you said he was. My dear boy, I've never seen him before. But this sweet little girlie here is telling me such a story. <laughs> I can hardly bear to hear it. It's so wicked. Well, my dear, that's about all, really. Stark naked. <laughs> The very idea of it, the dirty hounds. Oh. I used to know your poor father, too, before you were born. Adam, my dear, we'll never get to Archie's party. Do come along. Hello, Balcam. Banbro. Isn't this a repulsive party? What are you going to say about it? Oh, I just telephoned my story through. Now I'm going, thank God. I can't think of what to say. Agatha Runcible is usually worth a couple of paragraphs, but they're mm. featuring her as front page news story tomorrow over this customs business. I made rather a good thing over Edward Throbbing being in a log shanty in Canada, which he built himself for the help of one Red Indian. I thought that was very good. <laughs> Where is Throbbing, actually? Heaven knows. Government House Ottawa, I think. Oh. Who's that awful-looking woman? Mm. I'm sure she's famous in some way. It's not Mrs. Melrose Ape, the evangelist, is it? I heard she was coming. Who? That one making up to Nina. Oh, good Lord, no, no, she's no one. Mrs. Panrast, she's called now. She seems to know you. Oh, yes, I've known her all my life. As a matter of fact, she's my mother. Oh, my dear, how too shaming. Do you mind if I put that in? Uh, I'd assume you did. My dear, of course not. I quite understand. Well, I hope you do. Hello? Yes, still there, good. Now, new paragraph. One of the most striking women in the room was Mrs. Panrast, former Countess of Balcam. She dresses with that severely masculine chic which American women know so well how to assume. <laughs> Yes, I've just heard that there's to be an independent Labour Party, and I'm furious. I've not even been invited. Do you know, I, I'd quite made up my mind that your hair was dark. Oh, are you disappointed? No, but it's rather disconcerting getting engaged to someone with dark hair and finding it's fair. Anyway, we aren't engaged anymore, are we? Mm. Or are we? I'm not sure that we're not. How much money have you, Adam? Literally none, my dear. Of course, you know, Adam, don't fall asleep. There's always Papa. I believe he's really much richer than he looks. He might give us some money until your books start paying. You know, if I wrote a book a month, I should be free of that contract in the year. Hmm. I hadn't thought of that before. I don't see at all why I shouldn't. Do you? Or do you? Of course not, darling. I'll tell you what, we'll go down and see Papa tomorrow, shall we? Oh, yes. Mm. That'll be divine, darling. Adam, don't go to sleep. <laughs> now, where are we all going? Yes, where are we going? Let's go to Lottie Crumps and have a drink. Oh, oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. Oh, it's a delicious oh, idea. Oh, 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 o
morning, all. I've found the right room at last. You know, I popped into a study or something, and there was a sweet old boy sitting at a desk. He did look surprised to see me. Uh, this is Mama. Oh, oh. How how do you do? How are you? I say, I think it's quite sweet of you to let me come down to breakfast like this. Uh, are you sure you're not furious with me? All this is really much more embarrassing for me, don't you think? Uh, or, or don't you? Martha, the most extraordinary thing. I think I must be losing my reason. I was in the study just now when suddenly the door opened and in came a sort of uh, dancing hottentot woman, half naked. <gasps> oh. How do you do? How do you do? <sighs> I I don't think you've met my husband before. Only for a second. I I hope you slept well. Martha didn't tell me we had a guest. Do do, do you take to take tea or, or coffee? Oh, oh I say here yeah, something terribly funny in the paper. Shall I read it to you? Midnight orgies at number 10. My dear, isn't that divine? Listen. What must be the most extraordinary party of the little season took place in the small hours of this morning at number 10 Dining Street. Oh, at about 4am, the policemen, who are always posted outside the Prime Minister's residence, were surprised to witness, isn't this too amusing, the arrival of a fleet of cars from which emerged a gay throng in fancy dress. How oh, I should have loved to have seen it. Can't you imagine what they were like? The hostess of what was described by one of the guests as the brightest party the bright young people have yet given was none other than Miss Jane Bryan, the youngest of the Prime Minister's four lovely daughters. The Honourable Agatha Run... Um... Why, oh, what, what an extraordinary thing. Oh, my God. Hello, is that you, Adam? Oh, mm. Is that Nina? How are you, my darling? Oh, Nina. <laughs> Poor sweet. Oh, I feel like that too. Listen, Angel, you haven't forgotten that you're going to see my papa today, have you? Or have you? Do you know where he lives? Oh, you're coming too. Well, no, I don't think I will, if you don't mind. I've got rather a pain. Oh, what am I going to say? Darling, don't be tiresome. You know perfectly well. Just ask him for some money. Well, will he like that? Yes, darling, of course he will. Why will you go on? I've got to get up now. Goodbye. Uh, Nina, mm, where does your papa live? Oh, didn't I tell you? It's a house called Doubting Hall, and it's falling down, really. You go to Aylesbury by train and then take a taxi. They're the most expensive taxes in the world, too. Have you got any money? About seven shillings. My dear, that's not enough. Oh, but I wish you'd come, Nina. If I go alone, I'll give you such a... Oh, Lord. <laughs> I say, Lottie, can you lend me some money? Money, dear, of course. Judge, what's your name? Got any money? Oh, take it. It's a great privilege if I could be of assistance. That's right. Give some to young thing of me here. Oh, oh certainly. Who are you, young man? That's all you want, dearie. Yes, thanks. I must dash off. Oh, don't run away. We're just thinking of having a little drink. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Lottie. I can't stop. I've got to catch a train to Aylesbury. Don't ring twice. What do you want? Oh, um, is Mr. Blunt in? There's no Mr. Blunt here. This is Colonel Blunt's house. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I think the Colonel is expecting me to lunch. Nonsense. I'm Colonel Blunt. Have you come about the vacuum cleaner? No. Funny, I've been expecting a man all morning to show me a vacuum cleaner. Come in. Won't you stay to luncheon? Oh, I should love to. Splendid. I get very little company these days. Put your hat and coat here. I hope you haven't got wet. I'm sorry you didn't bring the vacuum cleaner. Never mind. How are you? Oh, i quite forgotten. I'm afraid you think me very discourteous, but it is, after all, impossible for me to ask you to lunch, and I have a guest coming on intimate family business. To tell you the truth, it's some young rascal who wants to marry my daughter. I must see him alone to discuss settlements. Had a telegram only this morning. Well, I want to marry your daughter, too. What an extraordinary coincidence. Are you sure you do? Well, perhaps the telegram may be about me. What does it say? Here, just a minute. <coughs> ah, yes, yes. Here it is. It says, um, 
Engaged to marry Adam Symes. Expect him luncheon, Nina. Are you Adam Symes? Yes. My dear boy, why didn't you say so? Instead of going on about vacuum cleaner. How are you? Now, if you don't mind, we'll keep our business until after luncheon. I'm afraid everything's looking very bare here at present. You must come down and see the gardens in the summer. How long are you staying? Well, I promised Nina I'd be back tonight. That's a pity. They changed the film at the Electra Palace today. We might have gone. Yes, yes, what is it, Mrs. Florin? Luncheon is served, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Florin, what is on at the Electra Palace, do you know? A Greta Garbo in Venetian Kisses, I think, sir. I don't think I like Greta Garbo. I've tried to, but I just don't. Anyway, luncheon, come along. If you don't mind, I prefer not to talk at meals. <sighs> For what we've just received, may the Lord make us truly grateful. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to, to have a little nap. Who the devil are you? Uh, Adam Symes. Never heard of you. How'd you get in? What do you want? You asked me to luncheon. I came about being married to Nina. My dear boy, of course. How absurd of me. How are you? So, you're the young man who's engaged to Nina. Now, what in the world do you want to get married for? I shouldn't, you know. Really, I shouldn't. Are you rich? No. Not at present, I'm afraid. That's rather what I wanted to talk to you about. How much money have you got? Uh, well, sir, actually, at the moment, I haven't got any at all. When did you last have any? I had a thousand pounds last night, but I gave it all to a drunken major. Yeah, why did you do that? Well, I hoped he'd put it on Indian Runner for me in the November Handicap. Never heard of those. When will you next have some money? Mm. When I've written some books. How many books? Twelve. How much will you have then? Well, uh, probably fifty pounds advance on my thirteenth book. And how long will it take you to write thirteen books? Um, about a year. How long will it take most people? About twenty years. Uh, of course, uh, put like that, I do see it looks rather hopeless. But, well, you see, uh, Nina and I hope that you, uh, um, that is perhaps that, well, for the next year, uh, until I get my twelve books written, uh, that you might help us. How could I help you? I've never written a book in my life. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> we thought you might give us some money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's an admirable idea. I don't see any reason at all why I shouldn't. How much do you want? Oh, that's terribly good of you, sir. Well, you know, uh, well, just enough to live on quietly for a bit. I, I hardly know. Well, would a thousand pounds be of any help? What did you say your name was? Adam Symes. Yeah, 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 well... Yes, why? M E S. There you are. There's a cheque for you. Now, don't go giving that away to a drunk major. Really, sir? I, I don't know how to thank you. Not another word. Uh, we'll send Mrs. Florin across to the rectory, make the rector drive you to the station. It's useful having a neighbour with a motor car. They charge fivepence on the buses from here to Aylesbury. Robbers, eh? Huh? 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 <laughs> Here is the news. The government fell this afternoon after being defeated on a motion arising from the answer to a question about the treatment of the Honourable Miss Agatha Runcible by Customs House officers. It was greatly held in parliamentary circles that the deciding factor in this reverse was the revolt of the Liberals and the Nonconformist members at the revelations of the life led at Number 10 Downing Street during Sir James Brown's tenancy. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, oh, good evening. Uh, uh, my name is Fenwick Symes. Uh, will you please tell Miss Blunt that I've uh, I've called for her? I won't go up. Certainly, sir. Come in. If you'll just wait here. 
I do 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 bing bang. I do 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 I can't tell you how clever I've been. What have you done, darling? I do stop dancing about. No, I can't stop. I can't stop. You've no idea how clever I am. Adam, are you tight again? Adam, I will be told. Here, look. What do you think of that? My dear, a thousand pounds. Did Papa give you that? No, I earned it. I earned it. Oh, <laughs> you should have seen the lunch I had. I'm going to be married tomorrow. Oh, Nina. Would Margot hate it if I sang in her hall? She'd simply loathe it, darling, and so should I. I'm going to take care of that check. You remember what happened the last time you were given a thousand pounds? That's what your papa said. Did you tell him about that? I told him everything, and he gave me a thousand pounds. Poor Adam. Uh, why do you say that? I don't know. Uh, Nina, why do you say poor Adam? Did I? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I do adore you so. <laughs> I'm going to be married tomorrow. Are you? Yes, I expect so, dear. Now, where on earth are we going? Arundel. My dear. We'll be married tomorrow, and we won't ask anybody to the wedding at all. We'll go abroad at once, and we just won't come back until I've written all those books. Oh, Nina, isn't it divine? <laughs> Where shall we go? Anywhere you like. Only rather warm, don't you think? Oh, I do like you so much tonight. If you only knew how sweet you look skipping about in Margot's hall all by yourself. I shall send the car back. We can go home by train. If there is a train. Darling, am I going to be seduced? I'm afraid you are. Do you mind terribly? Not as much as all that. Charmed, I'm sure. By the way, Nina, you said last night that you had something terribly important to tell me. Well, it's about that check. I'm afraid it won't help us as much as you thought. But, darling, it's a thousand pounds, isn't it? Just look at it, my sweet. Hmm? I don't see anything wrong with it. Not with the signature. Good Lord! The old idiot signed it, Charlie Chaplin. That's what I mean, darling. When I'm damned, this really is a bore. I say, Nina, we shan't be able to get married after all. No, I'm afraid not. What are you doing today? Oh, I don't know. What are you? I'm lunching with Balkan. Why? Oh, I don't know. He asked me to. I hope you don't mind coming to this awful restaurant, Adam. The truth is, I get my meals free if I mention them occasionally in my page. Not drinks, unfortunately. I say, Adam, Margot Metroland's got a party tonight, hasn't she? You going? I think probably. I usually like Margot's parties, don't you? Yes. Adam, I'll tell you a very odd thing. She hasn't sent me an invitation to this one. Well, I expect she will. The thing is, she told Agatha Runcible she wasn't going to ask me. Well, it means ruin for me. Absolute ruin. She's asked Vanra. Well, he's some sort of cousin, isn't he? So damned unfair. They were furious about Van getting the Downing Street scoop. If I miss this party, I may as well leave Fleet Street for good. I may as well put my head in the gas oven and have done with it. Mm. I'll tell you what. I know Margot Metrelin pretty well. Mm. If you like, I'll ring her up and ask her if I can bring you. Oh, will you? Will you, Adam? If only you would. Let's go and do it at once. We can telephone from my office at the Daily Excess. Oh, do hurry. Oh, um, uh, uh, Margot, uh, may I bring someone with me tonight? Well, Adam, I don't really think you can. I can't imagine how everybody's going to get in as it is. Terribly sorry. Who is it? Simon Balcairn. He's particularly anxious to come. I dare say he is. I'm rather against that young man. He's written things about me in the papers. Oh, please, Margot. Certainly not. I won't have him inside my house. I don't wish to have anything more to do with Simon Balcairn. 
My dear, how rich you sound. I feel my full income when that young man is mentioned. Goodbye. See you tonight. You needn't tell me. It's no good, is it? Oh, I'm afraid not. Done for. End of tether. Would it interest you to hear that Agatha and Archie are engaged? I don't believe it. Neither do I. One of our people has just sent it in. Half of what they send us is lies and the other half libel. Thank you for doing what you could. Goodbye. Enjoy the party. Hello, Nina. Hello, Adam. My dear, do look at Mary Mouse's new young man. The Maharaja of Puckapaw. <laughs> well, I call that a pretty pair. Oh, how bored I feel. <laughs> My, isn't this classy? It's all right. Nothing to make a song and dance about. Who's making a song and dance? I just said it was classy. Now you two don't start anything in here, not with your wings on. Mrs. Eight won't stand for scrapping in wings, and you know it. So who's starting anything? Oh, it's no use talking to chastity. She's too high and mighty to be an angel now. Yeah. Went out for a drive with Mrs. Panrass in a Rolls Royce. I saw her. Yeah, well, you ought to be glad, didn't you? Leaves the men for you. What we want to know, Chastity as how you came to take up with Mrs. Panrast at all. Oh, yeah, it's not like you, Chastity, to go riding in a motor car with a woman. It's third degree here. Oh, come, come on, on Chastity. Oh, what was it? Hold on. Come, come on. on. Please, don't stop it, will you? Oh, 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 oh. All right, if you must know. I, I thought she was a man. <laughs> Smut again. Oh, I'm oh, sick of shame to you. And you've made Chastity cry again just before the big act. Now, if you must bully someone, why choose Chastity? You all know by this time that crying always gives her a red nose. Sluts! There'll be no champagne for anyone tonight, see? And if you don't sing perfectly, I'll give the whole lot of you a good hiding, see? And now, for the love of the lamb, Chastity, do something about your nose. They'll think it's a temperance meeting to see you like that. Now, come along with me. We have to meet our hostess, Lady Metro Lamb. How do you do? Delighted to meet you. How do you do? Lady Metroland, these are my angels. <laughs> how do you do? I'm so glad you could come. Say how do, girls. How do you do? Now follow me. You don't look happy, my dear. <laughs> no. If you feel you want to change, let me know later and I can get you a job in South America. I mean it. Oh, thank you very much, but I could never leave Mrs. A. But... Well, think it over, child. You're far too pretty a gal to waste your time singing hymns. Forgive me, Lord Metroland, but there are spies everywhere. That man with the beard, do you know him? Something to do with the Foreign Office, I believe. Exactly. I think it would be better if we continued our conversation in private. I've been watching him. He's bowing across the room to empty places and to people whose backs are turned. Oh, well, this way. It's not as though Margot was so innocent. Oh, so that's Mrs. A. Shagger the dear. I'm, not, I'm sure she's listening. No, dear, of course she can't hear. She looks like a prop. Curious, but perhaps I shouldn't say that here, should I? <laughs> My lord, ladies and gentlemen, I have great pleasure in introducing this evening's guest of honour, Mrs. Melrose Ape. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing. Keeps me singing as I go. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go 
brothers and sisters, just look at yourselves. Oh, darling, is my nose awful? I do hope that silly girl hasn't been talking. She's gone again. <laughs> gone still. Brothers and sisters, I say again, just look at yourselves. What a damned impudent woman. <laughs> <laughs> God, I thought for one awful moment she was going to be a success. Stay exactly where you are and take off that beard. D damned if I do. Take, take off, off that, that beard. beard. Oh. Uh, oh, all right. If you will make sort of thing about it. Oh. There. I seem to have overestimated the gravity of the situation. It's only Mr. Chatterbox of the Daily Excess. Lord Balcan, will you kindly leave my house immediately? Social editor. Balcan here. Got your story? Oh, yes, I've got my story. Only this isn't gossip, it's news. Front page stuff. Oh. Take this down, will you? Hold everything. Little Lord Fauntleroy's onto a good thing at last. Jean, take it down. Right. Go ahead. Barely had Lady Everyman finished before Lady Throbbing... Lady who? Throbbing... Right. ...rose to confess her sins and in a voice broken with emotion disclosed the hitherto unverified details of the parentage of the present Earl. Got that. The Archbishop of Canterbury who up to now had remained unmoved by the general emotion, then testified that at Eton in the 80s, he and Sir James Brown. Well, that's it. End of story? Yes, end of story. Now we turn on the gas. End of story. Well, it's the end of my story. Perhaps I should have sent them my obituary. And so the 8th Earl of Balcan, Knight of the Holy Roman Empire, went to his fathers, who had fallen in many lands, <coughs> and, and for many causes, <coughs> as the eccentricities of British foreign policy and their own wandering nature had directed them. <coughs> At Acre Agincourt in Egypt. Social column indeed. <laughs> He's left me running a legal column. Legal column? 62 writs for libel up to date. And that's not the worst of it. Left me to do his job and mine. Lord Monomark was in an awful way about the story of Lady Metroland's party. And he sent down a chit that, that none of the people who are bringing actions against this paper can be mentioned again. Huh. Why, we can't even mention the Prime Minister. Or the Archbishop of Canterbury. Mr. Chatterbox, indeed. <laughs> I suppose you don't know anyone who'd care to take on the job. It'd have to be a pretty much if they would. Hello? Nina? Ni uh, hello, Nina? Yes? Uh, Nina, I say, I've just become Mr. Chatterbox. <laughs> now we can get married. Oh, splendid. The popular young attaché at the Italian embassy, Count Cincinnati, is held to be the best amateur cellist in London. Noticed at Chez Espinosa yesterday evening that two of the smartest men in the room were wearing black suede shoes with their evening dress. The fashionable bottle green bowler is now being worn by all. Oh, come on, Indian runner! Oh, come on, you wee beauty! Oh, come 
Drunken Luke leader. There's the drunken major. I, I say. Hey, 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 who the hell are you pushing? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, have you seen a drunken major anywhere? No, I haven't, here, and I don't suppose anybody else has either. Oh, damn. Adam, this is Eddie Little John. He's an old friend of mine. We knew each other as children. He's just back from Colombo. How do you do? I, I say, call me Ginger, won't you? Everyone does. I say, why don't you both come back to London in my bus and we can all have dinner together? What about it? Oh, Adam, do let's. Oh, all right. You know, it was awful luck meeting you two today. I was getting awfully fed up with London. It's so damn slow. Well, you take the other day. Well, I mean to say, I never saw such a place. There were about three people dancing. So I said, where's the bar? And they said, bar? And they said they hadn't got a license for what they call alcohol. Well, I mean to say, if that's the best London can do, give me Columbo. I wonder who writes things like that in the papers. As a matter of fact, I do. Now then, I say I no. Tweet. Do you? <laughs> you must be frightfully brainy. Do you write all that about green bowlers? Yes. Well, I mean to say, who ever heard of a green bowler? I believe it was a leg pull. Why, a whole lot of poor mutts must have gone out and bought green bowlers. You don't know me. I'm Gilmore. I don't want to start a row in front of the ladies, but, but when I see a howling cat, I like to tell him so. Why do you spit when you talk? It's a very unfortunate physical disability, and it shows what a howling cad you are th- th- to mention it. Ah, same to you, old boy, with knobs on. Adam, let's get married soon. Yes. It's such a bore not being married. I think you ought to go and see Papa again. It's never any good writing. Mm. All right, I'll do that. Do you remember last month we arranged for you to go and see him for the first time? Just like this it was, at Archie Schwartz's party. Oh, Nina, what a lot of parties. Masked parties, Victorian parties, Wild West parties. Russian parties, circus parties. Parties in flats, in studios and houses and ships and hotels. And windmills and swimming baths. Dull dances in London. You know, all the time I've been out in Salon, I've said to myself, as soon as the governor kicks the bucket and I come in for the family doubloons, I'm going to come back to England and have a real old bust. And now, when it comes to the point, there doesn't seem to be much anything I want to do. How about a little drink? I shall want two supers to carry the body. The rest of you are through for the afternoon. Oh, please, Mr. Isaacs, please, may I carry the body? All right, Colonel, if you want to run in and tell the wardrobe to give you a smock and a pitchfork, and hurry up about it or I shan't let you carry the body. Uh. Now, someone, go and find Miss Latouche. The trouble about this film is that we haven't got enough capital. But you're here to give us a write-up, aren't you? I'll call Isaacs and let him give you the dope. Um, Isaacs! Isaacs! Daily excess here. Uh, uh, how do you do, Mr. Isaacs? Ah, pleased to meet you. Now, this film, of which you've just witnessed a mere fragment, marks a stepping stone in the development of the British film industry. Oh! Hi, uh, I say, Colonel Blunt. Yes, yes, what is it? I'm afraid I've got very little time to spare. To tell you the truth, I'm at work on a scenario of my own. You see, Mr. Isaacs is the principal of the National Academy of Cinematographic Art. He's got a little office in the Edgware Road. And what's more, he's offered me a half share in it for £5,000. For some reason, my bank manager's very much against it. I- I'm afraid you've forgotten me, sir. Uh- I came here last month to see you about Nina. About Nina? Yes, uh, (laughs) I'm Mr. Chatterbox now. Chatterbox? (laughs) No, my boy, I'm afraid I don't remember you. Mm, There's a canon Chatterbox was up at New College with Uh, me. uh, Mr. Chatterbox on the daily excess. No, no, my boy, I assure you not. He was ordained just after I went down. He was never on the daily excess in his life. (laughs) Goodbye, my boy, I've enjoyed our talk. Oh, oh, sir, but you don't understand... Hmm? Uh, I want to marry Nina. Well, it's no good coming here. She's somewhere in London. Anyway, I happen to know she's engaged already. There was a young ass of a chap down here about it the other day. Well, goodbye. It's been so nice of you to come. Uh, Remember me to Canon Chatterbox. I must look him up next time I come to London. Writing for the papers, indeed, at his age. (laughs) Well, can't stop now. Nice to have met you. Goodbye. Oh, oh, but but I say... Goodbye. Goodbye. (sighs) Oh. I've had enough of this. I'm going back to London. We won't bother any more about Papa. We'll just get married at once. You'll be terribly poor. Oh, we shan't be any poorer than we are now. I think it'd be divine. Besides, 
It would be terribly economical. Myra says he's discovered a place where you can get oysters for three and six a dozen. Oh, I know, talking of Miles, he asked me to go to the motor races with him. Agatha's going as well. Do you want to come? Yeah, I don't think so, darling. Oh, well, by the way, how did the gossip page go? <laughs> Do you manage to fill it all right? <laughs> My dear, I think I did rather well. I said I saw Count Cincinnati going into Espinosa's in a green bowler. Things like that. You said that, but neither did you. Yeah. Mm, wasn't it a good thing to say? Oh, God. Angel, is anything wrong? Miles' malpractice has just been appointed Mr. Chatterbox. Oh, now we can't get married. Miles, where have you been? I expected you ages ago. Nigel, I brought two friends along. I hope it's all right. Agatha Ransible, Adam Fenwick Symes, Nigel Force. How, how, how do you do? Uh, pleased to meet you. Uh, by the way, Miles, uh, here are some brass odds. Oh. You're all ready to put them on and come over to the pits later. Uh, when you're ready, uh, I'll be in pit 13. Mustache, bye. Bye, bye. 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 Well, now we'd better put these brassards on. My dear, what bliss. Fancy they're having pins. Here you are, Adam. You can be depot staff. I'll be, oh, spare mechanic and Agatha, spare driver. My dear, what fun. There, now, how do I look? Oh, stunning. Now what do we do? Well, perhaps we'd better make our way to the pits. <laughs> we may even have five time to have a drink or a room. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, say, Adam, there's an awful man shouting at you. My dear, your friend. Oh, I say, I say. I've been looking for you everywhere. And I've been looking for you. I want some money. Card here. Some money. Yeah, it's no good. Uh, it's too much noise. Too many people. I can't get through. What's your name? Not it forgotten. Adam Symes. Uh, card here. I must know your name. Oh, it's no good. Look, now he's disappeared. Oh, the way you pick people up. Here we are. Pit 13. No smoking in the pits, please. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Now, listen, Miles. You're in charge of the depot. Do you think I've got all the signals, dear? The race may depend on them, you know. Uh, what, what does it mean if I wave the blue flag? It means you want me to stop. Oh. Will you kindly leave the pits if you wish to smoke? What a damned rude man. Let's all go and get a drink in that divine little refreshment tent. Come on. Here we are, home from home, darlings. All drivers will be on the other side of the track, please. Quick, we could miss the start. Still, a drink would be nice. Three large whiskies, please. Right away, sir. What a pig that man was. Even if we weren't supposed to smoke, he might at least have asked us politely. <laughs> Oh, they'll be round again in quarter of an hour. Let's have another drink. I really think after this one we ought to go back to the pits, don't you? After all, the poor sweet may be sigling away like mad. Oh, shall we take our drinks with us? I'm not so sure. You saw how rude they were about smoking. Here they come again! Look! Italian devil just beside him. Come on, Nadine! Come on! It will done, Nadine! Agatha, darling, you shouldn't have waved that blue flag. Oh, dear, how awful. Why not? Well, it means he's going to stop next lap. Good Lord, did I wave the blue flag? Oh, you know you did. Oh, shaming. Let's all go away before he comes back. Do you know, I think we'd better. Let's go and have another little drink. Don't you think, or don't you? Dying the hatch. Three more whiskies over here, please. Right away, miss. Yeah, your boyfriend over there. He's coming over. Well, there you are. I've been chasing you all over London. But I couldn't find one fingerprint. Do you mean you've still got my thousand pounds? Not so fast. You see, on the day of the race, I didn't know what to do. One half of me said, keep the thousand. The other half said, put it on the favourite and give him a run for his money. Well, in the end, I said, well, the young chap must be frightfully rich. He wants to throw away his money, so 
I plonked it all on Indian runner for you. You mean... I mean, I've got 35, sir, waiting until you condescend to collect it. Good heavens. Yeah, yeah, have a drink, won't you? Oh, that's a thing I never refuse. Uh, Miles, lend me some money until I can collect this fortune. Mm, how much? Oh, enough to buy five bottles of champagne. My dear, I say barmaid, five bottles of champagne, please, here, over here. Well, well pit 13 officials, please report to the pit as soon as possible. Pit 13 officials, report at once to the pit, please. Ah, uh, there we are. Uh, look here, old boy. I'm in rather a hole. I wonder, old boy, if you could possibly lend me a five. Oh, why, of course, here. Yeah. Miles, lend me a five, will you? Thanks. Here you are. Ah, well, here's to us all. What an angelic man your major is. Have one for the road, major. Oh, all right, let's have one for the road. <laughs> Cheers. When shall we meet again? Oh, any time, old boy. Tickled to death to see you any time you'd like to drop in. Uh, so long, everybody. Oh, but couldn't I come and see you soon? Uh, 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 about the money, you know. My 35,000. Yes, to be sure. Fancy my forgetting that. Uh, you roll along tonight to the Imperial. I'll give it to them. Seven o'clock at the American bar. Bye-bye. we better go, you know. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Keep the change. Thank you, sir. Cheers, Miles. I say we better go. Uh, Miles, you're an official and you may be needed. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. All right, let's go and watch the race from the pit. Hey, pit 13 officials. We've been looking everywhere for you. You've got to come quick. I say, has there been an accident? Yes, come on. No time to lose. Oh, What's happened here? The driver's just been murdered. Spanner under the railway bridge. Well, you're going to scratch. Who's the spare driver? I'm spare driver. It's on my arm. She's the spare driver. Look, it's on her arm. Well, do you want to scratch? Oh, don't you scratch, Agatha. No, I don't want to scratch. All right, what's your name? I'm the spare driver. It's on my arm. I can see it is. All right, start off as soon as you like. It's on my arm. I say, Agatha, are you sure you're all right? <laughs> Agatha, it's on my arm. I mean, are you quite certain it's absolutely safe? Not absolutely safe, not if they throw spanners. Just, you see, coming to. I'll stay and wave the flag. That's all right. Well, goodbye. Goodness, how stiff scary. I say, Miles, is it all right being tight in a car? Oh, all tight on the race cars. All of them? Mm. Absolutely everyone. Tight as houses. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right, then. <laughs> Number 13, the English Plunkett Bows, came into collision at Headlong Corner with Number 28, the Italian Omega car, driven by Captain Marino. Number 28 has overturned and retired from the race. Well done, Agatha! <laughs> Number 13, the English Plunkett Bows, has retired from the race and was last seen proceeding south, apparently out of control. Oh, my dear, that is lucky for me. A really good story. Oh, my second day in the paper. Well, I'm off to the post office to find my story. <laughs> oh, I'll come too. Oh, I must warn Nina about that drunken major. Oh, I nearly forgot. The Imperial Hotel at 7 o'clock. I say, have you seen a drunken major anywhere? I should think not, indeed. You shouldn't save him if he did come in, the very idea. Oh, well, I mean, perhaps he's not drunk now. He's a stout, red-faced man with a single eyeglass and a turned-up moustache. Hear him. Don't bring him in here again. Going on something awful, he was. I was glad to see that... Oh, there he is again. Hi! Hi! Shoo! I say, what about my £35,000? Well, what about the... You said you'd give me a cheque this evening, do you remember? Ah, uh, ah, uh, that's another matter. I told someone I'd give him a cheque, but how am I to know it was you? I suppose you were just a crook dressed up. Oh, I don't say you are mine, but supposing. Where would I be then? 
You have to look at both sides of a case like this. Oh, God, look, I'm meeting a friend here who'll swear I'm Adam Symes. Mm, might be gang. I'll tell you what. I'll sleep on it. Just 40 winks in the old chair. I'll let you know my decision when I wake up. Oh, don't think me suspicious, old boy. Other chaps money, you know. Oh. Oh, wake up! Oh, damn. Adam! Adam, over here. Oh, oh, my dear, I've been looking all over for you. Any news of Agatha? Oh, well... Well, they found car 13 smashed into a market cross in a village miles away. No sign of Agatha, though. I suppose we really ought to do something about it. Well, I can't leave my major. He'll probably wake up soon and give the money the first person he sees. Well, let's go and shake him till he gives us the money. Now, no, no, where is he? Why, he's here in his chair. Oh, God, he's gone. Hello? Darling, I've been so happy about your telegram. Is it really true? No, I'm afraid not. The Major is bogus. Yes. You haven't got any money? No. We aren't going to be married? No. I see. Well? I said I see. Is that all? Yes, that's all, Adam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Goodbye. Bye, Nina. Darling, is that you? I've got something rather awful to tell you. You'll be furious. Well? I'm engaged to be married. Who to? I hardly think I can tell you. Who? Adam, you won't be beastly about it, will you? Who is it? Ginger Littlejohn. You know Ginger. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, I am. That's all there is to it. You're going to marry Ginger? Yes. Well? I said I see. Is that all? Yes, that's all, Nina. When shall I see you? I don't ever want to see you again. Well, goodbye. Goodbye? Goodbye, Adam. I'm sorry. There's someone to see you, dear. Now remember, you aren't to talk much. Oh, Adam, my... Dear, how nice. Oh, look, there are some cocktail things in the wardrobe. Do make me a big one. The nurses love them. So it's such a nice nursing home. Only all the nurses are starved. And there's a breathtaking young man next door. He's putting his head in and asking how I am. He fell out of an aeroplane, which is rather grand, don't you think? Yes, I suppose so. How are you feeling, Agatha? Well, rather odd, to tell you the truth. How's Nina? She's engaged to Ginger. Oh, well, my dear, isn't that rather sick-making for you? I'm desperate about it. Adam, did you get that money from the drunk major? No. Do you know, all the time I was dotty, I had the most awful dreams. I thought we were all driving round and round in a motor car and none of us could stop and there was an enormous audience composed entirely of gate crashers all shouting at us once to go faster and car after car kept crashing until I was left all alone and I used to crash and wake up. Agatha? Oh. Adam? Oh, my dear, it's the time I've had trying to get in. First I said I was Agatha's father, and that wasn't any good. Then I said I was one of the doctors, and that wasn't any good. Then I said I was a gossip writer, and they let me in at once. <laughs> oh. Well, how are you, Aggie, darling? Mm. I've brought some new records. Oh, do let's try them. There's a gramophone under the bed. Mm. Nina and a whole lot more people are coming to see you today. Oh, I wonder if they'll get in. <laughs> Nina, I hear you're engaged. Yes, it's very 
very lucky. My papa has just put all his money into a cinema film and lost it all. My dear, it doesn't matter at all. My papa lost all his twice. It doesn't seem to make a bit of difference. It's just one of those things one has to learn about, losing all one's money. Nina, I've been absolutely miserable not seeing you. When we leave, do come and dine with me tonight. My dear, I know exactly what it will mean. Well, why not? You see, Ginger's not like us, really, about that sort of thing. He'd be furious. Well, what about me? Surely I have the first claim. Well, darling, don't bully. Besides, I used to play with Ginger as a child. His hair was a very pretty colour then. For the last time, Nina. Well, I suppose I must. Oh, you angel. I believe you knew I was going to. Nina, do you ever feel that things simply cannot go on much longer? What do you mean by things? Us? Or everything? Everything. No, I wish I did. I'd give the world for something different. Different from me or different from everything? Different from everything. Only I mean, I've got nothing. <sighs> What's the good of talking? If only you were as rich as Ginger, Adam. Or only half as rich. Or if only you had any money at all. Well, who ever heard of cocktails and a gramophone in a concussion case? Out you go, the whole lot of you. Why, I've known cases die with less. Nina, Miles, come on. Goodbye, Agatha. Goodbye. Darling, how too divine. How are you? How angelic of you all to come. You must be careful not to fall out at the corners. Do try to drive more straight, my sweet. Faster, faster. That's all right, Miss Russell. Oh. You mustn't get excited. Oh. Sister, run for the ice packs quickly. Yes, yes. Oh, all right, friends here. Ah! Faster, faster. I'll stop all right when the time comes. Morning, Lottie. Good morning, dear. And that reminds me, what about my little bill? Oh, yes. Here's the pen. Here's the ink. Here's a blank checkbook. Oh. All right. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, no, um... Seventy-eight pounds... Sixteen shillings... And... Tuppence. There. That's a dear. Why, look who's turned up, if it isn't Mr Thingamy. Good morning, Mrs Crump. Come and sit down and have a glass of wine, dear. Why, I knew you before you were born. Look here, Symes. What I mean to say is, what I'm going to say may sound damned unpleasant, but, but look here, you know. Nina and I are engaged, and I'm not going to have you butting in, or there'll be hell to pay. Well, what makes you think I'm butting in? Oh, no, look here, Symes. I mean, damn it, you mustn't say things like that. I mean, Nina's a girl who likes nice clothes and things, you know, and all that. I mean, Nina's going to be frightfully hard up. And, I mean, you haven't got an awful lot of money, have you? I haven't got any at all. Now, what you've been trying to say all this time is that you're not sure of Nina. Oh, rot, my dear fellow. Absolute bilge. Ginger, tell the truth. What is Nina worth to you? Good Lord. What an extraordinary thing to ask. I'd go through fire and water for that, gal. Well, then I'll sell her to you. No. What? Look here. I'll sell my share in her for a hundred pounds. A hundred down, and I leave Nina to you. I think it's cheap. Fifty. A hundred. Seventy-five. A hundred. I'm damned if I pay more than seventy-five. I'll take seventy-eight pounds, sixteen and twopence. All right, I'll pay that. You really will go away? I'll try. Now then, Ginger... <laughs> Have a drink. No, thank you. Here you are. 65, 70, 75, 78, and 16 shillings. And tuppence. And tuppence. This only shows what an escape Nina had, poor little gal. Goodbye, Ginger. Goodbye, Symes. Hello? Hello, is that Nina? Who's speaking? Uh, oh, Mr. Fenwick Symes. Oh, Adam. I was afraid it was Ginger. Darling, listen, something awful's happened. Lottie presented me with her bill. Darling, what did you do? My dear, I sold you. Darling, who to? Ginger. 
you fetched seventy-eight pounds, sixteen shillings and twopence. <laughs> and now I'm never going to see you again. Oh, Adam, I think this is beastly. I don't want not to see you again. I'm sorry. Goodbye, Nina, darling. Goodbye, Adam, my sweet. I think you're rather a cat. Of course, I'll never know. Hello, dear. <clears throat> oh, I've just remembered a chap came asking for you yesterday whilst you were with young thingamy uh, Little John. Uh, uh, not the drunk major. Wasn't drunk yesterday. Red faced chap with an eyeglass. You ought to remember him, dear. He made a bet for you. I must get hold of him at once. Uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, that I couldn't tell you, dear. I did know, but it slipped my memory. Anyway, he's gone to Manchester to look for you. Oh, damn. I must make a telephone call. Oh, Nina, listen. Uh, don't do anything sudden about Ginger. I may be able to buy you back. The drunken major's turned up again. But, darling, it's too late. I'm just packing for my honeymoon. We're going in an aeroplane. Ginger says he knows a top-hole little spot not far from Monty with a very decent nine-hole golf course. Oh, well. Yes, I know. We shall only be away for a few days. We're coming back to spend Christmas with the part, Doubting Hall. Perhaps we should be able to arrange something when we get back. I do hope so. Bye. Goodbye. There, Mrs. Florin. Doesn't that look nice? Welcome home to Doubting Hall. The Colonel's mother made that banner, Ada. It was always hung in the hall when he came home for the holiday. Shall we put some holly and cats in in Mrs. Little John's bedroom? Oh, whoever heard of holly in a bedroom? <laughs> well, well, perhaps just a bit of mistletoe over the bed. Ada, you are far too young to think of things like that. Why, oh, like that? As shouting as the Colonel. <laughs> should I like the fires in the big drawing room? Fires? Sir? No. Why should you? Oh, because of Captain and Mrs. Little John, sir. Huh? Captain and Mrs. Fiddlestick, never heard of them. Besides, Nina and her husband said they were coming down. I can't have the house turned into an hotel. Captain and Mrs. Little John, sir. Well, Nina, it's a long time since you came to see your old father. Come and sit down, both of you. Well, my boy, I can't say I would have recognised oh, you. Father, are... how nice to see you. How do you do, sir? Funny, something gave me the idea you'd red hair. Anyway, I'm glad to see you. We don't see many people here now. By the way, I've got a treat for you tonight. The last two reels of my cinema film have arrived. We shall go across to the rectory. The rector's got electric light, you know. Uh, I told him to expect us. He didn't seem very pleased about it. Said he had to preach three sermons tomorrow. Now, that's not the Christmas spirit. Anyway, off you go to your room and get cleaned up after your journey. Oh, Adam, I knew Papa would never recognise you. Look, someone's put mistletoe over our bed. <laughs> I think you gave Florin a surprise. Poor Ginger. I wonder, are we treating him terribly badly? Darling, the honeymoon was hell. Frightfully cold, and Ginger played golf all day and made friends with all the other English people in the hotel. Too spirit-crushing, as poor Agatha used to say. Oh, did I tell you? I went to Agatha's funeral. There was practically no one there. What about Miles? He's had to leave the country. You know, there seems to be none of us left now, except you and me. And Ginger. Yes, Ginger. I must say, it's very decent of you to ask us over like this. Uh, not at all, Colonel. <sighs> uh, indeed, I'm very much looking forward to seeing your um, film. That's the spirit. Nearly ready now. How exciting. Nina, where shall we sit? Oh, oh, oh yes, indeed. Now, uh, Nina, my dear, you, you sit over here by me, and perhaps Captain Little John, if you... Would be so kind as to move that chair. Uh, Colonel Blunt... Oh, don't worry about me. I should be working the machine. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. oh. damn the thing. I got a nasty electric shock. Never mind. Settle down, everyone. Lights out. Ready. Action. 
going backwards. Hello, something wrong there. I must have forgotten to rewind it. No, no, got it. There we are. The wonderful company of Great Britain presents Effie La Touche in a brand from the burning. A film based on the life of John Wesley. <laughs> Um, very nice. Too divine. I, I enjoyed that immensely. It's... But bless you, that isn't the end. There are four more reels. Ah. Everybody ready? Stand by. If you please, sir, the lights have gone out all over the house. Christmas at Doubting Hall. What could be nicer? You know, I'm very glad that Nina has married you, my boy. I liked you the moment I saw you. I hope we'll spend many more Christmases together. I hope so, too, sir. I'm sure of it, my boy. She very nearly made several mistakes, you know. There was an ass of a fellow here the other day, a journalist. Awful silly fellow. He told me that my friend, Canon Chatterbox, was working on his paper. Have some port. Uh, no, thanks, sir. Then there was another chap came. Selling vacuum cleaners. But you're different. Oh, hello, Nina. Just listening to the carols. Yes, grand, aren't they? By the way, tell me, did you really like what you saw of my film? It was the most divine film I ever saw. I don't think the rector enjoyed it. He seemed quite put out. And fancy not bringing us home. You know, that taxi had to come seven miles to take us a few hundred yards. No wonder he finds it difficult to fill his church if that's his idea of Christian fellowship. Oh, can I run? Oh, come in, rector. Good of you to come over. A happy Christmas. Colonel, I have very terrible news. I had to come over and tell you. Nothing wrong at the rectory, I hope. Worse, far worse. The most terrible and unexpected thing. War has been declared. Dearest Adam... I wonder how you are. Van has got a divine job making up all the war news. And he invented a lovely story about you the other day. How you'd saved hundreds of people's lives. And there's what they call popular agitation saying why you haven't got the VC. So probably you will have by now. Ginger and I are well. Ginger has a job in an office in Whitehall and wears a very grand sort of uniform. And my dear, I'm going to have a baby. Isn't it too awful? Doubting Hall is a hospital. Did you know Papa shows his film to the wounded and they adore it? They've put Archie Schwert in prison as an undesirable alien. Ginger saw to that. He's terrific about spies. I'm, I'm sick, sick such a lot because, because of the baby. baby but everyone, everyone says, says it's patriotic, patriotic to have babies in wartime. Why? Lots of love, my angel. Take care of your dear self, Nina. Who goes there? Where the 
the devil's my leprosy bomb? Um, who goes there? Oh, oh, I, I, I'm sorry, sir. Well, you're English, are you? My word! You're the drunken major. I'm not drunk, damn you, sir. What's more, I'm a general. Well, who are you? Uh, I'm Adam Symes. Uh, good Lord. What the deuce are you doing here? Well, I've lost my platoon. Lost your platoon? I've lost my whole bloody division. Oh, is the battle over, sir? Oh, I don't know. I can't see a thing. <laughs> Funny meeting you. I owe you some money. Thirty-five thousand pounds. Mm, Thirty-five thousand and five. Well, I'll give it to you now, if you like. But the pound's not worth much nowadays, is it? Still may as well give you a cheque. Buy you a couple of drinks in the newspaper. Oh, talking of drinks, I have a case of bubbly in the car. Come on. Now, get in. Sit down. I'll turn the light on in a second. Oh! Oh, hello. I'd forgotten about you. I picked up this little lady on the road. Well, what about a spot? Uh, you'll find some glasses in the locker. Uh, there. Now, perhaps our fair visitor will tell us her name. Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on, little one. You mustn't be shy. Oh, well, I... Oh, I've been called lots of things. I was called Chastity once. Then there was a lady at a party, you see, and she sent me to Buenos Aires, and, and then when the war came, she brought me back again, and I was with the soldiers training at Salisbury Plain. <laughs> they call me Bunny. I, I don't know why. Oh! Oh, dear. Well, now I don't rightly know where I am. I went the war awful. Well, you're as right as rain now, little lady. Uh, better than this chap. <laughs> look, he's gone to sleep. Now, let's see you smile and look happy. Oh. You mustn't sit there scowling, you know. You're far too pretty a mouth for that. Oh. Let me take off this heavy coat and wrap it round your knees. Oh, there, now. Isn't that better? Now, cosier now, eh? Oh, yes. I say, what a lot of medals you've got. Here, what they give you those for? That was Vile Bodies, a radio play by Barry Campbell from the novel by Evelyn Waugh. John Standing was Adam, Lynn Redgrave, Agatha, and Anna Cropper, Nina. Lottie was Julia Lang, Mrs. Ape, Margaret Robertson, the drunken major, Alan Lawrence, Lord Belcairn, Ian Lubbock, Colonel Blunt, Anthony Jacobs, social editress, Griselda Harvey, Ginger Little John, Sean Arnold, Mrs. Florin, Lynn Carson, Ben Fleet, a publisher, Leo Maguire, Matron, Diana Robson, Customs Chief and Judge, Malcolm Hayes, Mr. Brown, the Prime Minister, Gerald Cross, Mrs. Brown, Pauline Wynne, Miles Malpractice, Richard Griffiths, Margot Metroland, Carol Boyer, Faith, Patricia Gallimore, and Chastity, Elizabeth Morgan. Angels, customs officials, bright young things, revelers, race girls, maids, and film men by members of the cast. Vile Bodies was produced by R.D. Smith.